All right, so this is a technique for making high resolution aerial photographs from uh, drone images using um, software that we already have. So let's see how this works. The first software we're going to use here is called Image Composite Editor. And this is made by Microsoft and it's freeware. And so um, install it, launch it. And then you want to go New Panorama from Images. And you see here I've got a whole bunch of images that were taken um, from my drone. So I flew a, a path using drone deploy and capture these images. And so it's going to load those in. Now the downside of this technique is that you have to geo-reference the image yourself, but we can do that in ArcGIS and I'll show you that. So here you can see all those images lo are loaded in. And so then the next step here is stitch. So I'm going to hit next. And it's going to go ahead and um, align those images and stitch them together into one big image. So um, that takes a little bit of time. So drink a cup of coffee. And when it's done, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so it's stitched all those together, and we can zoom in a little bit, and you can see that it did a pretty good job. That's a good looking um, aerial photo made from those, but it's not geo-referenced, and this is just the, the preview image. So we're going to hit next, and... Um, this next option is to crop it, and I've never really messed with that. Um, and so uh, I think you could crop it down if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, we can crop it in ArcGIS, or we don't need to crop it. So then I'm going to hit next one more time to get to export. And you've got all these images, or these options over here. And... Um, Right now I'm going to leave it at a uh, quality of 75%. I think you can take that up to 100. But uh, I'm just going to leave it at 75 for now. And then export it to disk. And when I do that, um, it's going to go ahead and create a JPEG of that stitched together panorama. And we're done. And so if I go and open that up, you can see here's my JPEG, and I can zoom in, and it's got pretty good resolution. But um, like I said, we need to geo-reference this, so let's go ahead and take this to ArcMap and geo-reference it. Okay, so now we've got our aerial photo stitched together. We've got to geo-reference it. And... Um, I'm going to do that in ArcMap. So here I've, I've launched ArcMap. And you can see I've already got a point shape file loaded in of a few points. These are ground truth points or control points. These are spots in my area where I went out and I took the um, latitude and longitude coordinates using a GPS. So these are known spots of known coordinates. Um, and so to show you what these coordinates represent, I'm going to add a base map and just add um, ArcMap's aerial imagery. And you can see that this is the area. And you can see that these points fall in known locations in the area that I'm mapping. All right. And I know exactly where each of these points is. In fact, I think I labeled them properly. So if I click on the information for this point, um, it uh, you know it's the farthest west driveway column. It's a column at the end of the driveway, right? So um, so I know that these are are known points which I can use to geo-reference my new image. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this image, and I'm going to load in 
the aerial image that we just stitched. Now I want to show you something before I do that. Here's that image we just created, right? This is the stitched together JPEG that we just created. And just notice the file structure here. We're going to come back to this in a second. So I'm going to add that, which is here. And it's a large file. So if you look down here, it's going to take a few seconds to load it in. Okay, and so I get this warning, which doesn't surprise me. It says it's missing a spatial reference. Well, that's the point, that we're giving it a spatial reference. So that doesn't surprise me. So I'm going to hit OK. And that's why you can't see the image, because it doesn't have a spatial reference. And so if I zoom all the way out, you know, here's the image, but it's not properly georeferenced. It's not properly oriented. So if I go back, I need to get that image to show up here where the control points are. And um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit because I know that the image covers a little bit greater area than these points. And so I need the georeferencing toolbar. So I'm going to come up here and right click. Find the georeferencing toolbar and turn that on. And so you see that the georeferencing toolbar recognizes that, hey, that, that JPEG, that's something you might want to georeference. So it's already chosen, but you got to choose the correct image right here. Okay. So to get it to show up where, where we're looking at right now, we just had to go to this tab and hit fit to display. And now, now we brought it in to where we can see it. But it's not properly georeferenced and it's not properly oriented. You know, this uh, uh, north is sort of running to the to the left here. I want north to run up. So um, before I georeference it, I want to orient it so it's pretty close. Um, if you try to georeference it and it's not oriented very closely, usually the software has trouble with that. And so I'm just going to take this button here, which is rotate. And I'm just going to click it and I'm going to grab it and rotate it about 90 degrees. And that's pretty close to reality. Okay, that's pretty much north up. It's close enough now that I can georeference this image. All right. And so to georeference the image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool right here to add control points. I'm going to choose that. And this gives me a crosshairs. And I'm going to click on a spot on my unreferenced image on my aerial photo and then I'm going to click on the control point that represents that portion of the image right so I know that this um, uh, well we already looked at this one let's let's start with this one we we looked at the information on this point and we know that this is the column at the end of the west driveway which is about here and so I got to start with the unreferenced point. So I'm going to zoom in so I can get a good look at where that spot is on my new image. And, uh, you know, these are big images and it, it taxes the video uh, card. So it, it takes a little while, at least on my machine. But you can see, you know, pretty good high resolution image, right? And so this is the column that I'm talking about right here. So I'm going to click on that. And then give it a second because of the big image. Um, you want to make sure that it has registered that as a point. And so once this loads back in, you can see that now I've, I've registered that as a point. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out so I can find the actual control point that represents that area, which is here. So I'm going to zoom in on that control point so I can get a good, accurate click. And I'm going to click on that control point. And ArtMap will shift that. And you see now that we've shifted this picture so that that one point is exactly where it should be in our aerial photo, which is pretty slick. Right, but that's not enough. Because we have to, uh, we have to kind of uh, resize and, and move this um, photo around a little bit to make sure the whole thing is georeferenced. And so we need, you know, usually at least, I have four of these. Four is probably the minimum. The more points, the better. And so our next point that we want to georeference, we don't want to go like right next 
to the existing point. We want to kind of try and find a spot that's a little bit further away. So I'm going to pick this point up here, which I know this point represents this tree. So I got to start with the unreferenced image. And so that's sort of the center of this tree right here. And then I'm going to zoom out and then I'm going to zoom in on where that tree should be, which is right here on this yellow on this point. And there you go. And so it shifted and now that tree's in the right spot, but it held the first spot where it should be. And so it's warping the and resizing the photo to get these points to fit where they're supposed to fit. So uh, let's do this one in the lower right. I know, I know this one in the lower right is the corner fence post, which you see right here. And I'm going to come up and that should be there. And so fits pretty good. And so now our image is looking real good. Um, but our, our last point, this last point should be a fence post here near the barn. And you see they're off a little bit still. And am I Computer's got to catch up. And so this post should be where that dot is. But again, click it, make sure, make sure it registers it as a point before you go and click on the known, the control point. So now I can come over here and click there and it'll give it a little bit of a adjustment. Okay. And so now this photo is pretty well geo referenced. Now I say pretty well, because look, this last one, you see that these are not lining up perfectly, but that's, you know, that's maybe a, a meter off more or less. And so I'm going to right click and zoom to this layer, zoom to the photo layer. And now we have that image resized and geo referenced and it's pretty good. Now here's the thing is it's geo referenced right now, but if we shut down, it won't save that, right? We need, we need to save it in such a way so that when we open this up later, it will already be geo referenced. And so there's a couple ways to do that. One that works pretty well is I'm going to go to geo referencing and just do update geo referencing. And when I do that, you see all those control points disappeared and a lot of things grayed out. And then the next thing I want to point, let's go back to the file, to the folder where I showed you and see now we've got three more, three new files there, right? Here's the original JPEG, but now ArcMap created a couple more files. And that's what ArcMap is going to use to help georeference this file, right? And, uh, and so there you go. Okay, so now you have that JPEG and it's uh, georeferenced properly. So um, we can make it look a little bit better if we uh, go to properties. And then we look at symbology. And then if you come here to display background value and then leave this as zero, zero, zero. When you hit apply, you see you make that black border go away. And there you have it. And so now to show you that um, this JPEG is indeed geo-referenced, what we're going to do is we'll start and make a new blank map. I'm not going to save this existing one. And so I got a new map and I'm just going to go ahead and add the JPEG right from the start. And there it is. And I can um, maybe add a base map imagery and let ArcMap add its own imagery and we'll see how well they line up. And they look pretty good. Let me go ahead and get rid of that black border again. Set display background. And and there you go. You can see the roads are lining up and, and that figure is geo-referenced. 
Um, so that wasn't too bad. Um, and probably is actually faster than the online ones, but most importantly, it didn't cost us a dime other than the ArcMap license, which we already have. So um, let me know if you got any questions. Okay, so now what do I do if I don't have any GPS control points? A lot of times you can't collect control points with your GPS. Maybe the area is inaccessible, maybe uh, the canopy is, is too enclosed and you can't get a good GPS signal. Is there any way that we can geo-reference this new image that you just stitched together? And I've got a couple of ways that I think work pretty well. The first is to just use the base map in ArcGIS. And so within ArcGIS you have that base map imagery that is already geo-referenced. Now this imagery is not going to have as high a resolution as your new image. Um, and consequently it, it's not always easy to find matching control points. But if you can find spots on the existing ArcGIS base map that you can match up to the image that you just stitched together, then you can use that to geo-reference your new image. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here I have ArcMap, and I've added a, an ArcGIS base map, and this is you know, roughly the area where my, my stitched together image is going to be. So you might have to um, find some other kind of a file um, that's near your area so that you can get ArcMap to zoom into the area where your image is. Um, but once you get there, now we can look for places that we can match up with our new image. And you need some level of, of precision here. So I like to look for like corners or things. So like the corner of the barn here would be really good. The corner of this pond wouldn't be bad. Some of these trees might not be bad, although the shadows make it a little tough. Um, you know, road intersections are usually pretty good. Um, but might be a little wide for this example. Um, let me zoom out a little bit and see if there's uh, anything else I can find here. You know, you, you, uh, again, this uh, fence post or something might be good. But um, so let's try this. So I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, new stitched image. Okay, and again, um, I get a warning that there's no spatial reference, which I already knew. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I got my georeferencing toolbar. It's set to my new stitched image. So I'm going to fit to display. And again, it's not oriented properly. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. This one goes about 90 degrees. Mm, I'm going to go back a little bit. That's too far. And a little further. Uh, I know this road sort of runs east to west, so that's what I'm looking for. So that's pretty close. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and geo-reference like I did before. Um, one problem is the points on the base map are underneath my image. But that's not really a problem. So I'm going to start with my tool. And I want to start with the corner of this barn. So I'm going to zoom in on it. Again, we always click on the new image first, the one that needs to be referenced. And I'm going to choose here this uh, northwest corner of the barn. And then I need to find where the barn is on the arc map, base map. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just uncheck my image. And then I can look on the arc map, base map. And so then I'm going to go ahead and try and zoom in on it a little bit. And I can match that up pretty well. And now when I turn my image back on, you see that's mapped pretty well. So let's find something else now. Uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can't do this corner fence post again.
And so that's going to be about right there. And I'm going to turn off my image. Zoom out a little. Zoom out till I can see. All right. And so when I'm panning, I'm holding down C on the keyboard, and that allows me to pan. And now I'm going to zoom in. And you see the problem with using the ArcGIS base map is it doesn't have quite the resolution. So it's kind of hard to see where you would need to click. But this looks to be about that corner. So there we go. I'm going to turn my image back on. And now we zoom out again. And of course, every time you zoom in and out, Arc Map's got to go fetch new maps, and so it slows you down a little bit. And how about let's use the corner of the driveway? That should show up. Mm, no, that's kind of in shadows. How about the corner of the neighbor's driveway? That'll work. So we're going to go ahead and look at the neighbor's driveway. And that's about right here. Uh, yeah, we'll take that one. And that's going to correspond to about here. All right. But you see what I mean by it's, you don't always have the cleanest points. But you can get pretty good. Now, I wonder if I can't use that tree. I could probably use this tree again. Get pretty close. So I'm going to kind of pick the center of this tree. Turn off my image. And then go to the center of that tree. And there you go. And if we look, uh, go ahead and turn off the dark border. And you see the roads are, yeah, they're not as lined up. Um, you know, so. It's not as good as the first one we did, but that's not bad. And so we can go ahead and uh, update the display, and then it will be uh, geo-referenced for further use. Now, a final way that you can geo-reference this new image that you stitched together is to use the coordinates that are already built into your images. So whenever your drone takes a picture, it labels that picture with a set of coordinates. And we can assume that these coordinates represent the center of the image. And they're stored in what's known as an EXIF tag. And so we just need to get these coordinates from these images and use them to geo-reference your new image. Now this takes a few steps and it's a little bit more complicated, but it does work. So the first step is to extract those coordinates from the images. And again, uh, keeping with the, the idea that we're trying to do this on the cheap, um, we're going to use a free program called EXIF Tool. And this is not a very user-friendly program, all right? But you only need to use it for a short time, and you only need to use a couple of specific commands and this will extract all the coordinates from all your images. And so what you want to do is you want to get this exiftool.exe, it's a very small program, and make a copy of it and put a copy into the same folder as your images. Now you don't want to launch it, you don't want to double click it. Um, we're just going to run this from a command line. So you need to know where 
this, this program and your images are stored. So go to File Explorer, find this folder, and then copy the entire path of this folder um, by right-clicking on it and choosing Copy as Text. And, and we're going to use this here in the command line. Okay, here's where I downloaded that program EXIF tool. And it looks like I'm using version 10.69, maybe. So you can just Google that and you should be able to find it. And so here's the executable. And I'm just going to copy it. So Control C. And now here's the folder that's got all my original images from my drone. And I'm just going to Control V. And there I've made a copy and put it in with my images. All right. Now I'm going to, I need to know the name of this folder, so I'm just going to come up here and right click, copy address as text, and now that's on my clipboard and I can use that here in a second. Now to get the command line, we're going to go to the start button and type CMD and that's going to launch the command prompt. Then we need to switch to the drive which contains your images in your image folder. So just type that drive letter in a colon and hit return. And that will switch you to the drive. And then you have to change to the directory which contains your images. And so you use CD or change directory and then a space. And then you'll paste that folder address that you just copied. So just use control V to paste that folder address and then hit return and that should switch you to the folder that contains the images and the EXIF tool program and this is what you need to do so you can run that program okay so we need to get a command prompt so let's go down here to start click on it and then when that comes up go CMD and we see the command prompt and that's what we're looking for and so now we need to get to the drive which contains the folder with the images and on my computer that's F so F colon return and so now we're on that proper drive and then you'll remember that we copied the address of the folder so it should still be on the clipboard so if I go control V there's my folder now you notice that it added the F again, so that's going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and backspace and get rid of those. And now when I hit return, and oh, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. What I need to do is go CD and then that address. So change directory to that address. And so again, I need to get rid of this F and this colon and then hit return and so now I've switched to the proper folder so now I can run that program now to run the program you just want to um, type the following command that you see here and all this does is it launches EXIF tool and it extracts the coordinates and it will extract the coordinates from each image and save them all into a CSV file. And so this is what we want. Okay, so we just need to type that command in order to run the program and extract the coordinates and all I did was uh, just copy it and I'm going to paste it here at the command prompt. Uh, so control V and um, I don't even have to hit return I don't think. I think it's running. So let's see what happens. And there you go. And so it looks like it read 255 images and and extracted the coordinates from each of those. So I'm going to come over here to the file and you see we've got this new file here called long.csv and if you go back and look at the command prompt you see that 
long.csv was what we were going to name this file. So let's go ahead and see what's inside here. And so if you look here, I'm going to resize all of these. And so you see you've got the source file. So here's each of those images. And here's uh, the file name, so really the same thing. And it's got the image size, but here you've got the latitude and the longitude. And so great, that's what we need. Um, but this format's not going to work in ArcGIS. So we're going to have to do a little work to clean this up, and that'll be next. So you notice that the coordinates are not in a format which we can use in ArcMap. They're in degrees, minutes, decimal, seconds, but we need things in decimal degrees. Um, so we need to convert them before mapping them in ArcGIS. So let's do that now. Okay, so we've got these ugly coordinates. We need to turn into some good-looking coordinates that we can use. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this row. I don't want it. I want these headers. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this latitude and I'm going to copy it. Uh, because I need the space and I want to keep an original copy here in case I screw everything up. So here I get the latitude that I need to turn into decimal degrees. So I'm going to select this column. And I'm going to, go, going to go up here to data and then text to columns. And so I'm going to choose a fixed width. I've got to separate these numbers out from you know degrees and the little minute sign, the little second sign. And the easiest way to do that is with fixed width. So if I go next, you see it did a pretty good job of picking these apart, but I got to get rid of these other symbols. So I'm going to add another break there and I'm going to add a break there. And now I've got the numbers pulled out. So I'm going to hit finish. And so you see it took that one column and it split it into several columns. But some of these columns have the numbers I need. <coughs> so this column is going to be where my new coordinates are going to go. And I'm going to label it lat. And so I need to <clears throat> take these numbers and convert them to decimal degrees. So I'm going to start with the seconds, which is right here. And so I got 53.08 seconds. And there are 60 seconds in a minute, right? And so this is almost one minute. I need to convert this to decimal minutes. So I'm going to take this. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to start a formula. So I'm going to go equals. And then I'm going to take this cell and divide it by 60. And I'm going to hit return. And so you see my value is 0 0.88. So 53 seconds is about 0.88 of a minute, right? That makes sense. Okay, and so now I can combine this with the minutes to get decimal minutes. So I'm just going to come up here and change my formula. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in parentheses so it doesn't get messed up. And I'm going to add this to the cell that contains my minutes. And when I hit return, now my decimal minutes is 37.88. So 37 minutes, 53.08 seconds, is equivalent to 37.88 minutes. Right? Beautiful. But I need decimal degrees. Right now I have degrees, decimal minutes. So I need to do this one more time. Well, I've got 37.88 minutes, and there are 60 minutes in a degree. So let's go ahead and divide this by 60 again. So I'm going to come up to my formula. I'm going to wrap the entire thing in parentheses. And I'm going to divide that entire thing by 60. And when I hit return, you see I get 0 0.63. And so 37 minutes 53.08 seconds is equal to 0 0.63 of a degree. And again, this should make sense to you, right? If I had 30 minutes, that would be half a degree. This is a little more than 30 minutes, and it's a little bit more than a half a degree.
So there you go. I've converted my minutes into a decimal degree, but I already have 36 degrees. So again, I need to add these together. So I'm going to come up here to my formula, wrap the whole thing in parentheses again, and I'm going to add all of that to the cell which contains my degrees. And when I hit return, there you have it. I've got, uh, I've converted my degrees, minutes, and decimal seconds, which you can see here, 36 degrees, 37 minutes, 53.08 seconds, is equivalent to 36.63141 degrees. And so that's decimal degrees, and that is what we need to map an arc map. And uh, we also needed to do this, again, because this format, you know, that's got a mix of numbers and letters and symbols, and arc map would never play well with that. And so now that I've got that, that uh, formula, I'm just going to double-click this little square, you know, the little box here in the corner, double-click it, and that gets copied all the way down. And it's beautiful. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and save before I lose any of this. And I'm going to go ahead, and while all those cells are selected, I'm going to Control-C to copy. And then I'm going to go to the Home tab and choose Paste Values. And so now, if I click on one of these cells, you see it's not a formula anymore. I put the actual number values in there. And that's just, that'll be a lot easier. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about changing something and messing this up. But also, I have to do that because I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these columns. Just so ArcMap doesn't get confused by anything save it up. Now I need to do the same thing but for longitude. So let's go ahead and copy my longitude column over. And now I'm going to go data, text to column, fixed width, separate out those symbols, hit finish. Now my new column I'm going to label lawn and I need to start by getting my decimal seconds. So this, or excuse me, my decimal minutes. And now I need to take that whole thing and add it to my existing minutes. All right, so now I have decimal minutes, but I need to wrap this in parentheses and divide by 60, and that's my equivalent decimal degrees. And I need to then add all this, so I need to wrap this in parentheses and add it to the number of degrees I have, and there's my um, decimal degrees. However, um, we're in the Western Hemisphere. In the Western Hemisphere, um, longitude is negative. And so we need to go ahead and multiply this whole thing by negative 1. So let's wrap it in one more set of parentheses and go times negative 1 and hit return. And now that's the correct longitude. So I'm going to double click, copy that down, control C to copy. Come over here, paste values. See that I've got numbers instead of a formula. Get rid of all these useless columns now. Hit save. And now I've got a, f a file that I can use in ArcMap. Now that we have a CSV file with all the coordinates for all your images, Let's go ahead and map them so we can see the exact center of each of your images. So we'll just take that CSV and create a series of control points. Okay, so now that we have our CSV file of control points from the images, we've launched ArcMap. Let's go ahead and add that file. 
that's long CSV. And we need to display those points in XY form. So display XY data. And it's picked out the fields that we just created. The X field is longitude, the Y field is latitude. We need to tell it the coordinate system, which we'll use the WGS84. And we hit OK, and this warning is fine. And so there you go. And so you can see that this is a grid, and each of these points is where the drone took a picture. And to make sure that this is in the right spot, we'll go ahead and add the base map image. And you see that we're in the right spot. And so now we have a series of control points, and each of these control points is associated with one of our uh, images we took from the drone. And if we click on any one of the points, you see you, which file that point came from. And so once we find useful control points, we know exactly what file we're going to use. Now that we have all these control points, let's just kind of look and find four or so that will work for control points. So we want them spread out across the new image, uh, you know, sort of one in each corner. And we also want to find ones that will likely be easy to recognize in the new image. So look for control points that are, you know, all near or right on top of some sort of distinguishing feature. Anything that will um, be able, you'll be able to find in the new stitched image. So I've uh, changed the color of the control points and made them yellow, make them a little bit easier to stand out on this background. So I need to find four or so in the corners that will make good control points um, for my new image. And so I'm going to start down here in the uh, southwest corner. And I need to find a point here that I will be able to find on my final image. And there's a lot of points here that are sort of in the woods. And these are going to be tough, although you know it would probably be doable. But I'm going to try and, and make it easy on me. I'm going to find something that will that'll stand out. And I see this point right here. It's right at the edge of the woods and right on the road, and it's in the southwest corner. This might be a good one. So I'm going to check the info on this, this point right here. And you see that that point is for image 107. Okay? And so now I'm going to go back to where the images are stored. And I'm going to find image 107. And here it is right here. And so the center of this image is where that point is. And so if you look about where the center of the image is, you can see that it's kind of where I expect. It's, it's near the edge of the road. It's, it's next to the woods. And so, you know, this image that you're looking at now, this has been incorporated into the stitched image. And so this is exactly what I should be looking at when I look at the stitched image. And so I should be able to find this area on that stitched image, which means that I can relate it to this point that I just found, and I can use that as a control point. And so that's what we want to do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to try and find three more like this, and then we can um, figure out where exactly these points lie on these images. Now that we know what control points we want to use, we want to find the center of the images for those control points. Uh, the control points should be labeled with the file from which they came. So you should be able to find the original images for each of your control points. So you want to find these images, and then you want to somehow mark the center. Now you can sort of estimate where the center is, but if we're trying to be precise, let's mark the exact center because we assume 
that's exactly where the coordinates for that control point should fall. And you can use Photoshop or something. I use a program called GIMP, which is GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is like an open source version of Photoshop, and it's very powerful. And um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark the center of each image. And then that's going to tell me what to look for when I'm geo-referencing my stitch together image. So I want to mark the exact center of these images that I'm using um, for the control points. And so I've got a, a GIMP here. Um, and so I can show you how to do this in GIMP. And, and you could probably figure out an easy way to do this in any sort of image manipulating program. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. That's file picture number 107 is what I'm working with. And so I pull that up here. And, um, and now you got to be careful because sometimes the images aren't oriented the way you expect. Um, depending upon which direction the drone was turned or which direction the drone was flying, these may or may not be in the proper orientation. And so if you want to be able to recognize it in ArcMap, you want to rotate it to get the proper orientation, which I, I actually had to do to this image earlier, and it, it's, it's rotated properly now. So I need to find the exact center of this image. And so in GIMP, the way I can do that is I can go to Image, Guides, and New Guide by Percent. And so it's going to put in a vertical guide at 50%. And when I hit OK, you see I get this nice line that bisects it. And so now if I do that again, image, guides, new guide by percent, switch to horizontal, also 50%. And so where those two intersect, that is the exact center of this picture. And that is exactly where that control point should sit. And so this is what I can use to geo-reference my final image. Um, so I can just leave this open. I want to save this because um, I have to do this a few more times. So I'm going to use my image, my screen capture program. And you can get any, you know, screen capture program you want. This one is called Print Screen. I use it. I really like it. Anyway, so I'm just going to screen capture that. And uh, I've got a Word document open here. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste that. And then I want to remember what uh, file it was. And so that was 107. And so if I need to go back and look for that file again. But now, when I'm looking for this spot, um, you know, when I'm geo-referencing my final image, I can come and look and I can see exactly where the center of that, you know, where that point should lie. And so I need to do this a few more times to get a few more control points and then we'll be ready to go. Now that I have a good idea of where my control points should fall, I can just use the same techniques I used before to geo-reference this new stitched image. Okay, so that was a lot of work. However, um, we should be able to geo-reference our image now. And let's try and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, stitched JPEG. And again, we get the warning that there's no spatial reference, which we know. And again, we want to set this to our stitched JPEG and choose Fit to Display to get it close. And again, we want to rotate it a little bit to get it kind of close. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's pretty good. Okay. So just like before, we just need to use the control points and match them up with this image. And so let's find our first control point. So you remember that this one right here was one that we were going to use. Or actually, you don't know that. This is one that I was going to use. And it's for image 144. And I found the center. And I saved it. And so this is image 144. And so you see the center. 
And so you see where that point should go. And if I zoom in a little bit, okay. So my control point should go sort of right where this stain is, right? Kind of at the very bottom of that stain. And so I'm going to come here, and I'm going to get my control points tool. And I need to zoom in on that portion until I can see that stain really well. Let's zoom in a little more. And since this stitched image was made from these other images, I should be able to find these spots pretty easily. And so there's that stain. And so let's look again. So sort of right in the middle where that dark turns to light, right at the edge, I'd say right about here is where that control point should be. So I click and let it go ahead and register that as a point. Again, we're slowing down because we've got these big files. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Zoom out a little bit more. Zoom out a little bit more. Got to find that point back. There, there's that point there. Ah, uh, I missed it. Let's drag a little. There. This is that control point. Right? This is point 144, and I've marked exactly where this point should go. So I should, it should snap right to it. And now we've put our stitched image right there. And if we go back to where we marked the center, that's pretty darn close, I think. And so that's how we can use this to georeference our final image. So let's go ahead and do another one. So I'm going to find one in the opposite corner. And I think the one that I wanted to use, let's go and look here. Okay. So if I look at this point here, that's for picture 190. That's not it. I have a problem. I need point 203 is the one I was looking for. Oh, I know what my problem is. I see what my problem is. I'm looking for the point based on my stitched image. My stitched image is not georeferenced. I need to look for the point based on the baseline image. This over here is where I need to be looking. I was looking on the new image, and it's not right yet. But the baseline is, you know, the base image is pretty close. So this is the, the point that I want right here. You understand? And I click on that, and that's point 203. That's the one I'm looking for. Okay? So now let's go back and look at that image 203. And so right there is where the, the control point should go. And so let's go back to ArcMap. And now we zoom in on the new image and we look for this spot. And so, if we go back and look at the marked image, you see we got the burn pile here. We've got kind of this 
brown spot. If we kind of there's there's a little lighter green there. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing why this technique is a little tougher because we find these spots there might not be you know where our control point is might not be very easy to see on the final image but we can do our best so I kinda have an idea here where that point should be I'm gonna zoom in now see there you go now of course my computer's gotta catch up again and there you can sort of see that light stuff and you can see this brown patch here and that burn pile so I'm thinking that control points gonna be right about here let's go ahead and look one more time and you see that so horizontally you see in this light patch there's a little there's a green tree or something and we're just south of that and we're just at the edge of that burn pile so if I come back I'm gonna get my control point tool I'm just at the edge of this burn pile you know what I see what's going on I see what's going on. I don't see what's going on. These images are not... I think that image needs to be rotated a little. Is that right? What am I missing here? Let's zoom out a little. Let's see if I can drag this into the same screen. Get rid of that. So I'll put these next to each other now. So what's happening is uh, okay, so you know, I'm looking at one image and looking for the center of that one image your mosaic here is a bunch of images stick to, stitched together and so when it's stitched together it used maybe some different images and so that's why things don't look like uh, they don't look exactly the same I think that's what's going on here and so if I compare these two you do see that the burn pile has about the same shape here and you can kind of see some of this lighter stuff. So I think this is what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to kind of look. And I say right about there is where my control point is going to be. So I'm going to click on that. And now I'm going to zoom back out. And this point is this point 203 over here. and it kind of snaps to that and there you go so sorry for the confusion but you see the limitation of this method is it's a little bit harder to find your spots um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish this up using my last two spots I won't make you suffer through that but you get the idea you get the idea of how we can use the coordinates from the existing images and use those to try to geo-reference our final image. Um, and it works pretty well. And that's it. Um, so let me know if you've got any questions.